Hey, how's awesome, it guys? All right, so in today's video, we're going to learn how to embed a multiple charts in a single figure using my Lib in Python. So this is going to be the uh, visualization that we're going to create in this exercise. So here you can see that in this uh, figure, we have four different charts that are embedded in this uh, single view. And one of the benefits having multiple charts in a single view is it allows you to see multiple categories or multiple groups in a single view. All right, so now let's look at how we can create a search visual. All right, so first uh, we're going to download the data set. And right here I have this uh, Python script in which you can download the script from the link in the description below. So basically I'm using the historical uh, stock data from Yahoo Finance. And here using this uh, Python script, I'm basically combining the historical price of these four companies into a single table. Then I'll create a CSV file called dataset.csv. Now let's create the map palette visual. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the libraries. All right, so for uh, this Python script, I'm going to import three modules. The first one is going to be the random module, and which I'm going to use to generate uh, random colors. And to load the data set, I'll be using pandas library. And to create a visual, I'll be using mapalib.pyplot as PLT. Now let's load the data into a data frame. All right, so here I'm basically uh, using pd.recsv and load the CSV file. Then I want to create a unique list of the takers of the company's name. Now let me uh, open the CSV file first. All right, so if we look at the table here, so this line here is looking at the tickets count. Then use the unique method to eliminate the duplicates. Now on to limiting the uh, charts to four charts in a single view. I'm going to slice the list into uh, four items. Now this line here is going to generate 20 random colors of random hex values. Now to specify the number of rows and number counts, when I create the visual. All right, so here I want to uh, set the uh, row count to two because that's all the rows that I want to have based on your category size or grouping size. So here I'm going to uh, use this formula to return the uh, count count based on the total number of the categories. In this case, I will have four. Now I want to create the figure and the axis. And we can use plot subplots method and here I need to specify the number of rows and number of counts. Then I'm going to uh, set the figure size. In this case, I'm going to set the figure window 12 by 8. Now to prettify the uh, visual, I'm going to change the background to uh, navy blue. And I think this is going to be the hex value. Now this is going to be the uh, default setup when it comes to constructing the map left figure. Now I need to uh, iterate each item from the takers list. Basically, we're going to uh, insert the charts one by one into the figures window. All right, so here I'm, I want to return both the item index position and the uh, list element. So I'm going to wrap the takers uh, list with the enumerate function and I'll return both the uh, element index and the elements value. Now to uh, go back to line 15. All right, so here uh, when we specify the number of rows and number of counts in a figure, this axis object is going to return as an array that contains all the uh, axis object based on the uh, dimensions that you specified it. All right, so for example, uh, let me come out these two lines. Now here, if I print the axis object, oh, give me a second. Now, if we look at the output, now this is going to be the uh, first row, and this list is going to be the second row. Now if you uh, specify the count size to let's say five, in that case, each list is going to contain uh, five items or five access supply objects. Now we need to uh, array uh, each ticker from the tickers list. And since I don't want to plot every single data point, that's going to make the chart a little bit uh, messy and uh, a little bit uh, compact. I only want to plot the uh, 
data points of the last seven days. So here I'm going to filter the uh, data set by the uh, taker symbol. Then I'm going to slice the records to get me the uh, last seven days. Now once we have the chart data, we all need to uh, place the chart into the figure. Now here we need to figure out the location where we are going to embed the chart. Now here we can figure out the row location by using uh, these two calculations. Now we can reference the axis supply object by providing the row index and the count index. And I'm going to name uh, the object as x. Now using the x object, we can go ahead and uh, plot the chart. And for demonstration purpose, I'm going to plot a line chart using the plot method. Now here, the x-axis is going to be the date, and the y-axis is going to be the stock price. Now to change the uh, line color, we can use the color parameter. And here I'm referencing the color using the uh, colors list, uh, providing the index location. And the uh, line width parameter is going to set the uh, thickness of the line. All right, so uh, this one is optional. Actually, I'm going to take out the label parameter because that's going to be used to set the legend's item. In this case, we're not going to insert a legend. However, I do want to insert a marker. Now let's look at what we have so far. All right, so I'm going to, right, so here I'm gonna, uh, oh. All right, so if I go in the uh, graph the plot, now this is what we have so far. So we have this uh, darker navy blue background and this for uh, line charts. Now, the rest is going to be uh, formatting the chart. And it's going to be the most uh, cumbersome step. All right, so I'm going to start by inserting the y-axis label. Now, for the x-axis label, and since uh, it's going to be self-explanatory, so we can basically take out the x-axis label. Now, for the y-axis label, because the number can mean anything, so we want to make sure that the user knows what the number represents. In this case, it represents the closing price. Then I want to add the uh, subplot title, and it's going to be basically the uh, ticket's name. I also want to enable the gray line, and I want to set the gray line color to this uh, uh, light gray color. All right, so let's see. All right, so we have the uh, subtitle right here. It's hard to see, but we're going to uh, fix that later. All right, so let's continue. So let me uh, put that back. All right, so uh, here I want to change the uh, label font color to white. So that way that we can easily see the text. All right, so uh, it's getting annoying. Let me fix the uh, indentation. Now, this is what we have uh, right now. And so we did a pretty big improvement from the uh, previous uh, feature. Now, if we look at the charts, now noticing that the x-axis label uh, is a little bit uh, squeezed. And I want to rotate the labels, maybe uh, 45 degrees. All right, so here, let's do this. All right, so we can rotate the uh, x-axis label by referencing the x object, the tick params. Now using this parameter, we can modify the tick parameters. Now here I want to modify the x axis. So I'm going to set the axis parameter to x, stands for uh, x axis. Then I want to rotate the label by uh, 45 degrees. And that's going to make the chart look like this. Now here, uh, the bottom chart is covering the uh, X axis labels just a little bit. And here we can auto modify the layout by using the plot that tights layout method. So, what this method will do is it's going to look at the overall uh, layouts from your uh, figure. Then it's going to automatically adjust each object's location or position to spread out the charts a little bit. So everything's going to be a little bit easier to see. Now if we look at this line charts, so the maximum point 
and the minimum point of all the uh, charts uh, is a little bit too close to the border. So I want to increase the y-axis range just a little bit. And we can do that by using the set y limit method from the XRP chart. Now the first parameter is going to be the lower bound. So I want to decrease the uh, lower bound range by 5%, followed by the upper bound. And lastly, I want to uh, add the data labels to show the price value. So here I'm using the zip function to combine the dates and the uh, price together into a single uh, array. Then I'm going to unpack the elements. I'll name the uh, dates as date label, price as price low. And to add the data label, so here we can uh, use the x dot text method. Then we're going to provide the location where the uh, label is going to get inserted. All right, so this is going to be the x location and it's going to be the y location, followed by the string that we want to display. Now here I want to align the text horizontally to the center. And for the uh, vertical alignment, I want to set that to bottom. And for the text color, I want to set that to black. All right, so this is going to be everything we need to write to create the visual. Now let me go ahead and uh, launch the application or run the script. And it's going to be the final result that we're going to produce using the Python script. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to share in this video. And hopefully you guys find this video useful. And feel free to uh, post your question or your feedback in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a like and click on the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.